it. The other thing that's been bugging us today, there was a story came out of Toronto. Toronto's top doctor is calling for speed limits to be reduced by 10 or 20 kilometers an hour on the streets in Toronto, and it could be just about anywhere. Medical health, uh, medical officer of health, Dr. David McEwen, wants drivers limited to 30K on residential streets, which is what school zones are now, pretty much, and 40K on the major roads. So that's 30K on residential streets and 40K on major roads. So we would be doing the school, school zone speed limit on every street in every city. I don't think people are prepared to buy into this. Me neither. Well, let's find out. Whether, how is it possible then to slow drivers down? If we're worried about pedestrians, if we're worried about cyclists on our road, how then do we slow people down? Joining us on the live line is Dr. Walter Block. He's a professor of economics at Loyola in New Orleans, but he was with the Fraser Institute for quite a while, from 79 to 91. Dr. Block, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, is there, a, is there um, any way or should we even think about slowing down traffic to 30 kilometers an hour, 20 miles an hour on our, on our urban streets? Well, uh to me, the issue is not so much how to slow people down. We know how to slow people down. You just post a lower speed limit, and, and you ticket people who go over that speed limit. To me, the more interesting question is how to make uh, driving more safe. Good and, point. And I think you have to reckon with the idea that there's some sort of conservation of danger uh, among people. They sort of feel they have uh, the right to a certain amount of danger, and if you try to make it safer, then they uh, act in other ways that make it more dangerous. For example, if you widen the uh, lanes in a highway, people go faster. On the other hand, if you narrow the lanes, they go slower. So it, it seems like they, they have in their mind or in their gut or somewhere uh, a certain level of safety. So, for example, if you make them go real slow, then maybe what they'll do is uh, zig in and out of traffic more. Uh, like if, if the speed limit is now uh, 18K or 20K and someone's doing 15K, they'll go around them more likely because they feel safer. So I, I think you always have to reckon with that. You see, the, the reason they put stop signs on is to make people feel safer, and the reason they have traffic lights is to make them feel safer. But in certain countries in Europe, what they've done is taken away the stop signs and taken away the traffic lights, and everyone's scared. <laughs> <laughs> so they go slower. And well, this is the idea of the roundabouts also. I mean, with the roundabout, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen to you. <laughs> you. You go much slower. Uh, so it's weird that you have this sort of conservation of safety, or I don't know what you'd call it, but the idea that people have a, a certain amount of danger that they feel is right, and if you try to mess with that, then they react uh, so as to overcompensate in different directions. Walter, it's interesting you raise that thing about the, the roundabout, and we've all been stuck on those and gone round and round and round. <laughs> but but it, it, also in Europe generally, I mean, they build, I remember in Germany these, and I, I tried to find the correct word for it, but these jut-outs, you know, into residential roads, especially around schools, which force drivers to slow down. So you're, you know, you're going along and you suddenly, you just have to stop because you have to let the car that's coming the opposite direction come and then you go. So obviously it slows, you know, drivers down that way. I mean, instead of always wanting to reduce speed limits, is this about trying more creative road design? Is that what we should be looking at? Well, what I think is that what we should really be looking at is uh, different uh, rules in different places. Let a mouse that let a thousand flowers bloom. I don't know about a thousand, but if, uh, let's say, each province uh, was a, a laboratory and uh, British Columbia had one view in Alberta, the next in uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan going east, uh, and each province had a different way. You know, some ways we adopt this doctor's view, let's slow, slow it down to 20K and 30K. Uh, and others, let's speed it up. And then what we can do is keep statistics and see which one works better because uh, the rules of the road don't come to us from on high. Uh, uh, they don't come to us on stone tablets. They don't come to us, well, they sometimes do come to us from Ottawa uh, or Washington, D.C., but uh, that's wrong. In other words, in every other area of an human endeavor, what we should do is we try different things and then we see which one works best. So I think that would be my uh, suggestion. Is there any model that has been proven to work to, to reduce accidents that you know of anywhere in the world? Which is the best model? 
Well, I don't. You see, the problem with that is that you don't have these experiments. And I'm not. I'm an economist. I'm not a traffic safety person. So my uh, shtick or my thing is competition. I mean, the reason we have pretty good shoes and pretty good wristwatches is different people make shoes and wristwatches and cars and everything else in different ways, and then we sort it out seeing which one satisfies the consumer best. So what I'm trying to do is to apply this basic economic knowledge to an esoteric area where it really hasn't been applied to hitherto, namely road safety, and uh, extrapolate from that. In other words, in every other area of human endeavor in economics, the reason we get pretty good restaurants, pretty good whatever, is due to competition. You know, this restaurant does this, that restaurant does that. Wh- which is better, to have pink tablecloths or blue ones? I don't know. <laughs> but if, if some restaurants have pink tablecloths and others have blue and, and the pink wins, well, then the blue will either have to change to pink or they'll go bankrupt, and then we'll have pinker restaurant uh, <laughs> tablecloths. So well, that's, that's a reach to put all that together, Walter. Hey, I, wanna, I appreciate you coming on the program. Thank you for your insight. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Dr. Walter Block, he's a professor of economics, but for a while he was at the Fraser Institute in Vancouver. Interesting kind of a theory. The economically esoteric competitive model to traffic safety. <laughs> Bron- Bronwyn Hair, Richard Brown, this is News Talk Radio. Richard Brown Show for a Friday afternoon. I love Walter Block, but <laughs> I'll tell you, he came at that sideways. But Pink you know the one, the one and traffic rules. But the one thing he did say that's true is yeah. if you give people an opportunity to take advantage of a situation that is widening a lane, they will. You narrow a lane, and they will, they will be forced to work within that spectrum. Which is part of the reason for putting bike lanes in in the first place is because that narrows the driving lane. Now that drivers get all ticked off. Yeah. But if you go back to the original premise of this conversation, yeah. which was the medical officer of health in Toronto, David McEwen, saying, look, we want to protect cyclists and we want to protect pedestrians. And the way to do that is to lower the speed limit on streets to 30K and on major roads to 40. My suggestion is this. If you want pedestrians and cyclists to be safe, then we obviously have to educate drivers. But we also have to educate cyclists and pedestrians, too. Right. And I mean, what, what drives me crazy, for example, in terms of this whole school zone 30K thing is, you know, high school speed zones, for example. I mean, these are 18-year-old, you know, up to upward to 18-year-old children, kids, young people who are basically encouraged to just keep stepping out in front of cars. When, when in elementary schools, fine, but I really don't think it's healthy to continue to to coddle and lower speed limits and lower and lower. I mean, the agenda here is basically that we're all supposed to walk or take a bike or a wagon. Social that's engineering. The, that's 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 the, the agenda, and it's interesting because Regina apparently has laid this topic of lowering speed limits to rest for a while. But Charlie Clark, who's a city councilor in Saskatoon, has said exactly the same thing. He wants speed limits reduced to accommodate pedestrians and bikers, and it just drives me crazy because we all drive so slowly here anyway. By and large. Yeah, and and we should look at some of the uh, other cities, other models, by all means. But, I mean, in a lot of of bigger cities, people move. I mean, they braid. Slower traffic goes to the right. It's about road rules and efficiency, not only slowing down. Here, I got a text. Uh, Why don't we just apply the rules to pedestrians and bikers? In other words, look at the number of people who jaywalk and the bikes that run red lights. And it encourages that. If you always are telling drivers to do stuff and not telling them to do, you know, to, to sort of adhere to the road. And that's what, you know, and that's the thing is that, and we've all seen it, and I have great respect for people on bikes. I really do. But I want you to, if you're on a bike, I want you to obey the rules that I obey. I don't want you, I'm stopped at a red light. This is two days ago. I'm stopped at a red light. And a bike comes up on my right. He looks left and right and then goes straight through against the red light. Okay? Drives me crazy. I got one more text here from Joseph and Regina. Put the bikers and joggers in school year-round to learn safety and get all that crap out of their ears. <laughs> Would they have a 20K school zone around that school or 10 one? <laughs> Bronwyn Air, Richard Brown on News Talk Radio.